Okay, so what I want to do real quick is just a sample program, and it's just going to be one this time instead of like several different small samples of a loop. And it's not just a loop, it's several loops, but it's just one pretty large contiguous program. I'm going to utilize several different loops, but typically I'm just going to use a few do while loops for menuing, and I think it's going to use a nested for loop for printing out rectangle, if I'm not mistaken. So, there's some fairly complex stuff going on here, and it deals with variable scope as well, so it kind of has an all encompassing aspect of everything I went in the previous video. So, let's go and take a look. Let's see what we got. Oh, there I am. Oh, bad. So, real quick, just again, like instead of having a bunch, we just have this one simple rectangle.c. And here it's it's not super long, it's about 50 lines long, it's longer than a lot of what I've done, but not too bad at the end of the day. Let's just look through this. We have a few libraries, we have our standard IO library, we have math. I don't know if we need math, I don't think we do. i get rid of that actually. Let's get rid of that. We have C type for a particular function, I'll go over that in a second. So this is all we need. We have our main function. And right off the bat, we have a simple character being initialized for user input. It's not being set to anything. You can tell immediately following we have a do while loop. So we're starting a menu. And we have this input and it's in the main function scope. So we're gonna use it in this do while loop, but we don't wanna initialize it in the loop because then it'll be locked into that scope when we lose it when we exit the loop. So first thing, print F is the rectangle hollow. So the first thing is we are going to identify what the rectangle would print is hollow or not. And you'll see what I mean when we start running the code, but we have a yes or no, we can put in Y or N. Now we have scan F percent C, I'm gonna do a space here. And if you do space percent C, it, if you have, some incorrect inputs on percent C is gonna eat new line characters so it doesn't do any like double printing and stuff like that. I might actually compile it without this and show what I mean, but I digress. Actually, you know what? Let's just let's keep it the way it was. Keep it this way. Okay. So we're gonna take in user input from the user as a character, and then immediately you'll notice we do user input equals to lower user input. So I do this function here to change the as key value if I did uppercase Y instead of doing user input not equal to lowercase Y and it with user input not equal to uppercase Y etc etc. Instead of doing four different checks here I just go ahead and take whatever the user input it, lower it and then do a check on Y or N because no matter what, it will be guaranteed to be lowercase once I do this. So it's just a way to kind of optimize what's actually happening here to reduce the amount of checks that's happening. And that's my condition. So if the user's input does not go to Y and user input does not go to N, then we're gonna stay in this loop. The moment it is Y or it is N, we will exit. So that is the first bit of menuing done. Then we initialize two more variables, the rectangle's length and the rectangle's height. Two different variables, both integers. You notice we have two do while loops. That's gonna be two menus, one for the length, one for the height. I have, please enter rectangle length, five through 25. This is arbitrary. For the hollow aspect, I really wanted to be at least greater than three on both sides so you can actually see how the hollow aspect works. I just chose five to 25 because it kicks in the terminal a bit better. So you should be able to visualize it instead of going up to say a hundred or something really large like that, or something really small where the hollow aspect would be a little bit strange, or at least it wouldn't come across. But I'm rambling at this point, so just ignore me. Well, don't ignore me, but bear with me. So, rectangle length, rectangle height, the only difference, and then the wall loop. To make sure it's not less than five, not greater than 25. Otherwise, you can just loop again over and over and over again for rectangle length that's set. Loop again over and over again until it's correct. That's rectangle height set. And now we have all of our variables set the user input, rectangle's length, and rectangle's height. Again, variables are all in 
the main function scope. Finally, we have this fairly lengthy nested for loop. So two for loops going on. We have int j equals zero, j is less than rectangle height, j plus plus. And we have for int i equals zero, i is less than rectangle length, i plus plus. If user input is equal to y, that means earlier that we were saying is a rectangle hollow. If it's yes, then that means a hollow rectangle will execute this code. If it's not hollow, it'll execute this code, which is the else statement saying print, a hash symbol, and a space. Now, if it is hollow, then we have this fairly long if statement, actually. There's four checks happening here. So if i is equal to zero, or i is equal to rectangle length minus one, which would just be the rectangle's length in the day because we're kind of starting at zero. So the length is going to be the length minus one. So if we had five, it do zero through four as opposed to one through five, this is how we count. And then we have j is equal to zero or with j is equal to rectangle height minus one. I'm going to touch on this line in just a bit once I get done explaining what's all happening. So then we have printf hash space or print two spaces. So basically, this check here is doing the border. So if I am in the zeroth index of my length, so it means if it's zero, it's going to be the left side of it. If it is rectangle length minus one, that's the right side of it. So those are the far edges. And then J equals zero is going to be the top. And that rectangle height minus one is going to be the bottom. So that means it's going to print out the border of it. Everything in the middle is going to be two spaces, leaving it hollow. And then again, if it's not hollow, we just print out the hash space for everything and it's a filled in rectangle, no big deal. And then again, once we're done filling out the actual row essentially, we do a new line character here the next row and then continue this loop on over and over and over again, break out a loop, new line character, go to the next row over and over again, so on and so forth until the nested loop is done, return zero, and that's it. So back to this line, yes, it's doing the border. However, there's something happening here and also here and every time that we do any of these logical operations, what's called is short circuiting. So notice that we are doing several or statements, which we know is the same thing as Boolean addition. So, 1 plus 1 plus 0 plus 0 plus 1 plus 0 is going to be 1. 1 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0, so on and so forth, is going to be 1 because no matter what, we're adding 1, which guarantees that it is going to be set to 1 because if we or anything with which is essentially true, the result will be true. So if I have i equals 0, then that's going to be set to 1. It is not going to check any of this none of these checks are going to happen because this is already one short circuits set to one we don't care about the rest we know the result already if we were doing and which like this right here user input not equal to y if it checks that this is false because it'd be zero times zero times zero times one times one times one or zero times one times one times one we and anything with false we know the result of the equation. So if it checks this and gets a zero, doesn't even bother with this right side over here because it doesn't need it. Short circuits, it's the actual input. So even if you had one of these really long chains here, it might seem inefficient up right off the bat. And to a degree, I don't like putting in a lot of conditions in one if statement. But this is kind of show that this is a border happening and I had it to where there were nested if statements here one for the I section of the border one for the J section and it made it more confusing than it need be but since this is done short circuiting 
The worst condition is when you get J equals equals rectangle height minus one, because it has to go through all of these, but it's not that big of a deal. If you have, say, I don't know, 15 different operations happening in one if statement, you might want to look into optimizing that and kind of separating that out and try to, like kind of how I could have put this if user input equals equals y, I could have put that in this if statement, but it would have gotten really long and it's just kind of better if I put it here because it's a single check, it's from the user, it's either hollow or it's not. It's fine to put it here because if it's not hollow, it doesn't do any of this code. It just does this, perfectly fine. So make sure you don't group up too many logical operations in one if statement. You can break it up into more appropriate aspects and it'll go a long way and it'll also be a lot more readable. So that's kind of all what's happening here. Let's go ahead and run the code. PD into loops. Put it out. A compile. There we go. There's my executable. Is the rectangle hollow? Let's just say no. Let's do no right off the bat. Now I'm going to close my eyes. Let's do eight and then nine. All of a sudden, we have a rectangle. That is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine by, that's eight by nine. So eight long, nine tall. And it is not hollow. So there is a hash symbol in every single spot that we would be printing. I do the spaces here just to kind of fix the formatting a little bit. I can actually show what it looks like without like this. I don't really care for it. No, it again, not again. And yes, this is a rectangle, but like doesn't look that good because I mean it's eight by nine. It should be very close to a square, but notice there's some spacing in between so I try and match that with the spaces and this is just me kind of rambling about formatting but a lot of people ask how to like format things properly and this is kind of those things to think about is just notice how your output looks and fix it however you want fix your output to be exactly what you want it to be Ooh, right back to this so the character part here let's see what happens if it does what I think it's gonna do I try and do a yep okay so what's happening here is it's reading something that's not appropriate so if i do eight we'll do it yes so remember every time we do a character when we hit enter you're passing in the character and the new line character after it so it's taking in the character doing the print and then doing the new line character as well so way around that Put in space, and that will basically clobber the new line character that comes into existence there. So if I do 6, if I do O, if I do equals, all these different things, it's going to happen. But if I do Y, this time I do it in a hollow rectangle, and we want to do N by 13. Now, I have 10 across, 13 tall, and it's just the border. So again, there's a good bit happening here, and it doesn't have to be this complex. I could just forego the do while loops completely and just assume that the user is going to input proper data. Uh, never assume that. Always do this. I'm doing this for error checking and error prevention, basically. So if the user tries to put in something that's invalid, I want to catch that, I want to prevent that. So I do that with the, basically the check for is the rectangle hollow or not. I check that first. Then I get the actual specifics of the rectangle, make sure they're in a good range. And then I just go through with my for loops, 
which is more the computational part, especially this more complex if statement. And that chooses, hey, am I printing out a hash for the border or do I print out two spaces essentially for the entire center? And if it's not hollow, I just print out hash no matter what. And then after I do it every single row, draw a new long character, that's how we get the formation of this rectangle. Not too bad, honestly. So, overall, hope all that made sense. And overall, I do hope it's useful. I hope it really does go home and show just why do while loops can be very, very useful. They're not super frequently used, especially in other languages a lot of the time, but they do serve a pretty nice purpose. They're they're not perfect. So there are some cases that use them, some cases that not use them. And what I was doing here was I was initializing variables without setting any data for them. And that's not the best thing to do. I used a do while loop as a safety net to make sure that the data had to be set, but it's usually also just good spell state protocol to generally set your data to something and that way it won't throw a fit. Like if you try to access a variable that doesn't have any data set, it's not going to like that. So generally initialize your data, set something to it, and then do some preventative measures like do while loops, while loops to ensure if you want a specific range, you fix to where the user has to be in that range. And then you can start doing complex stuff with say like a for loop. So that's generally a good pr primitive aspect of doing with this. There's a lot of other more complex stuff that we'll get to, to ensure data integrity and whatnot. And that's using me through the idea of functions and stuff like that. So this is just basic menuing, basic loop computation, and it's very, very simple right now. So again, I do hope all this made sense. I hope code was legible and more so I do hope it was helpful. So that being said, thank you for watching. I'll see you next video.